and welcome back to Earth Science and Gizmos Part 2. Okay, so last earlier in the week we looked at um, week 9 and we looked at Gizmos Part 1 and it was a PDF so it should be in your notability and please save this to your drive because that would be the easiest. It looks like this and I, there's a whole video that tells you how to do this, right? Okay. So with that being said, I'm going to grab my finished one here and you're going to go to your gizmos part one and you're going to get to the point, uh, page three, where you have the graph and the data table and you're going to take a screenshot of that graph and that data table. Okay. So all you need is the graph and the data table like that. Okay. All right. Now we are going to go back into week nine. And we are going to look at Earthquakes Gizmo Part 2 assignment in Schoology. Again, it's a PDF, so we are going to send that to Notability. And it looks like this. Okay. And when we look at this, we are going to read the instructions. We're first going to put our first and last names up here and put the date in. Okay. And it says, note to teachers and students, this exercise assumes that you have a data table and a graph made while using Earthquakes Part 1 Recording Center Gizmo. If you do not have these or have never used Gizmo before, you have to do that first. Okay? And we did that. We went and took a screenshot of it. So this reviews our vocabulary, right? We need to know what a body wave is, and those are the seismic waves um, within the Earth, the P and the S wave. There are also seismic waves, L waves, which are surface waves. An earthquake is the shaking of the earth. The epicenter is directly above the focus, right? The focus is the place within the lithosphere, sometimes called hypocenter, um, that the earthquake happens, the movement happens, creates a fault where one goes up or down or side by side, and the epicenter is the point directly above on the surface. Um, we record these S, P, and S waves through a seismograph, that's a machine, and it creates a seismogram. So let's look at our prior knowledge, okay? All right, I'm going to pull this one up here because this is the same thing. All right, our prior knowledge says, um, these three dogs meet in a dog park. Each dog is attached by a leash to its owner. So the triangles that we had that were part of the stations in Gizmos 1 are now looked at as owners, okay? And each of them have a different color leash. This dog has a purple leash, this dog has a green leash, and this dog has a blue leash. And as we look at them, they, the owners are stationary, so the dogs have the ability to go around 360 degrees, but that's the distance that they can go. So the happiest dog is probably the blue dog with the biggest circle, right? Okay. We notice that the circles intersect, right? So as we look at this, right? This is what's happening in the dog park, all right? What do each colored circle represent? Well, in 360 degrees, the farthest distance the dog can go from its owner. That's the answer to number one. And the reason I'm making the video is for you to be able to stop and replay things, pause, and make sure that your worksheet's done so that when you're finished watching this video, you can actually submit it into Schoology and be finished. Okay. Number two, where could all the dogs meet in one place? Well, we are looking, there's two circles intersect there, two circles intersect there, two circles intersect there, but this is the one place where all three circles intersect. And remember in Gizmos 1, when we were talking about epicenters, we had a circle with an X on it. So draw a circle with an X on it right there. Okay, so question number three is, is there another spot where all three dogs can meet? And the answer is no. Why? Why? Because there is no other point where all three interse uh, intersections of the circles meet. Here, the green dog and the purple dog can meet. Here, the purple and the blue dog can meet. And here, the purple and the blue dog can meet. Excuse me, I think I said it wrong. Green and blue dog can meet. And here, the purple and the blue dog. But there's only one spot where all three of them can meet. Okay. So now to do our warm-up gizmo, we have to go to pull up Safari because it is not an app yet. We need to um, use explorelearning.com. Type that in. Hopefully your iPad remembers your username and password and you're going to log in. Okay. And when we log in, um, 
we're going to go to Earthquakes 2. Okay, and we're going to click that up. Um, and we're going to launch Gizmo. All right. Okay, so here's our warm up. When you need, uh, when you used Earthquake 1 recording station, Gizmo, you learned how to find the distance from a recording station to the epicenter. With Earthquakes 2, you're going to determine the epicenter. Okay, you're going to use the data from three recording stations to find the exact location of the epicenter. So just like the dogs in the dog park, we're going to find where all three circles meet. Okay, so let's read the instructions. Click play and then pause when the seismograms are complete. So that means before the, they go off. In Gizmo 1, it ended, it stopped. In Gizmo 2, it doesn't, and you're going to lose your data. So let's do this. Where is click? Let's click play, and we're going to net, hold it over and look at, there's different seismograms. All three of them are different. When we think the pens are kind of stable, we're going to pause it. Okay, so before you get to the T is where you need to stop this. Okay, looking at this, because now this matches this, that's where they got it from. Okay, so we can look over here. What do we remember from Gizmos number one? Well, remember when we had the epicenter here and we had our station way out here at 860 kilometers, our seismograph gram looked just like this, right? It was long and flat and then the P wave and then there was a space before the S waves, okay? When we moved it closer, it looked more like this, right? But it, this was moved over here, right? So we felt it immediately, okay? So which recording station is the closest? Well, we need to figure out which one registered the same P wave. All of these registered the exact same P wave. But the reason that some of them picked it up earlier is because they're closer. So let's see, this has about a one block and almost, almost one and three quarters. This one has three blocks. This one has one and a half. So the answer is C. Okay, how do you know this? Well, Station C picked up the P wave first, and it's the same P wave for all of them. Okay, so knowing that and the way we just talked about it, let's look at question number two. Which recording station is furthest from the epicenter? Well, here you go. It's station B. One, two, three. It took a lot longer for that same P wave to come and be registered at station B. And how do you know it? Because of the distance until the P wave was registered. Okay, so we're now going to move to the activity. And before we do this, okay, let's go back to where we took that, um, smaller, where we took that screenshot, okay, and let's insert our table and our graph right there, okay. So you should have enough room, you got to resize it because it is a PDF and it's in Notability, okay. And now we have our completed graph there, okay? But let's read our instructions. So they say, click reset, the reset button here, okay? Then click play and pause before they're complete. So we're gonna do that again, all right? We inserted it, so we did number one, we've put that table in there, okay? Now let's look at two. Let's measure and turn on the show time probe. Oh, so we have to start again. So this one we're done with, okay? So let's click reset. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to click play and we're going to hold on to this. Look at how different they look. Okay, and as soon as the pens start moving, stop moving, we're going to click pause. Okay, so, so to measure, remember we had to turn on the time probes on each seismogram. Locate the first P wave and the first S wave. Make sure the time interval, the change in time for each seismogram, measure that and then use your graph to find the distance of each station to the epicenter. Okay, so here's our show probe, all right? Remember, this is the primary wave and this is the secondary wave, so let's go to station A. We're gonna put that right where the small squiggles start, right there, okay? And we are gonna move this over because here's where the big, heavy concentration of the S waves. So when we look at our change in time, it's gonna be about 65. So we're going to write over here in this time interval 65 seconds, right? And then last time we gave you the distance and you figured out the time. This time we're going to use this 
and we're going to figure out the time, and then we're going to use our graph to figure out the distance. So we know this says 65 seconds. So let's go to our graph. Here's 0 seconds, 20, 40, 60. So the middle of that would be 70, so it's going to be just above the 60. Okay, We're going to go over until we intersect with the blue line. I'd say it's right about there. Okay, And we're going to drop down. Now we know that this dark line is 500, so that must be about 480, 490. Okay, And we're going to write 490 right there under the kilometers. And now it says um, turn on the show station A checkbox right here. Okay, so it automatically comes up to 400, but we know that 65, when you go over here and come down, it's going to be 490. So I'm going to move that to 490. Okay, now we're going to go and figure the time interval for B. So I'm going to move my S into where the big squiggly lines are, and I'm going to move the primary probe there. And now we're at 80 seconds, so I'm going to write 80 seconds in this table. Okay. And let's go up to our graph and go 0, 20, 40, 60, there's 80. Let's go all the way across to where that meets, okay? And to me, it looks like it drops down right at 600. So I'm going to write 600 kilometers. Let's turn on our show pro B and let's move that to 600. Okay. Now let's look at the last one. Here we are here, okay? Move this back to where the P wave starts. Look at how close that S wave is. It's got to be real close. Okay, 23 seconds. So let's go over here. We're going to write 23 seconds right there. Okay, we're going to go up to 20, 23 seconds. It's going to be about 110. We're going to write 110. We're going to come over here and we're going to move this down to 110. Around 90. There we go, 110. And look what happened we got our epicenter. So right there is where the epicenter is. Okay? So over here we located it. Let's answer our questions. So three, where could the epicenter be located with just station A? It could be located anywhere along the purple line. When we look at station B, which two places could the epicenter be located now? Well, we can't quite see the, the second one, but it would be somewhere up here, and that's going to be your epicenter for B. Let's go to C, okay? And it says from the epicenter, if you did everything right, you should see the epicenter symbol. If you do not, recheck all of your distances, and you may need to just move them slightly, because you know how we moved them and it showed. So. Relative to the three circles, where is the epicenter located? Uh, we can see that the epicenter is a very close to station C. That's what you would write right here. Epicenter is very close to station C. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to now take a screenshot of this. So you're going to take a screenshot, right, of that. Whoops. Or you can do it like this. Pull it down and do a snapshot with the tools, right? Okay, and save your image, right? Okay, so I'm going to close this out. Save it. All right. All right. I'm going to come over here and I am going to take my image here and I'm going to insert it. And there it is. Okay. And you have to do the same thing. So you're going to click reset. You're going to let it go through again and you're going to insert it the second and the third one in here. Okay. So once it's done, you're going to save it. In Notability, you're going to also save it to your drive and import it into Schoology.